The Gendome Home 3000. This is a sleek looking power station. I'm actually really excited for this one. It looks really, really nice. It's very skinny. It's got wheels on it, so it's easy to move around and it's manageable enough. I can actually pick it up and put it up on the table and everything like that quite easily. So it looks like it's gonna be a very good unit. It's a heavy cap series, which means it has the ability to run a lot of equipment at once, has a large internal battery and large solar input. I've had it for a few weeks now. I've been doing a lot of testing with it. I've run heaters, I've run fridges, I've run lights, fans, all sorts of things off it. It does everything very well and it just looks really good. I wanna go through all the pros and cons of the Home 3000 from Gendome. They are doing a special where this is a brand new product coming out and I'll have links for all of that down below, but this may be a good fit for you. So I'm Ben with the Minuteman Prep YouTube channel. Let's get into this. The Gendome Home 3000 has been a really cool unit so far. The user manual is extremely clear. There's not a bunch of translation issues into English or anything like that. Right at the very beginning, it goes into all of the specs right up front here. So this has a 3000 watt inverter with a 3072 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery. It's rated to 2500 cycles to 80%. And then we have a 1500 watt solar input. And the charge parameter is from 12 to 75 volts and get this up to 45 amps. That is a massive amount of amperage to go in, which is awesome. And then it also even has a wind port where you can connect a wind turbine to it to get an additional 200 watts. And realistically, if you wanted, you could just add another 200 watts of solar to the wind port and be putting in 1700 watts from solar. It's got all sorts of other great things like a 30 amp 12 volt port. So that way you can run all sorts of heavy DC equipment. This would include massive ham radios or even simple things like DC fridges. It does have a RV plug, a TT30 plug rated to 25 amps. There are a lot of cool things. In addition to that, the screen really is cool. It looks cool, the lights here, and I've even got the app pulled up. It did take a little bit to get the app connected properly. Obviously there's nothing going on right now, but it shows me all the temperatures, all this, the status of it. I can even turn on the AC output and the AC outlets are here on the back. It's got these magnetic flaps. Unlike other systems where they have these silicone flaps over each outlet, they include these panels that just magnetize on very easily. This is the Anderson cable that is meant for wind solar. It just has an empty red and black cable on the back here. This allows you to tie directly into a wind turbine. I personally do not like wind turbines. I have not heard a single good thing about them other than that they're a great way to spend money and not get any return. So that's why I would use an Anderson to MC4 adapter and connect another solar panel or two. Comes with a standard wall charger, no big power adapter brick. So we have our NEMA 515 plug here, and then this is a C13 plug right here, and it's rated up to 1800 watts of wall charging speed, which is very fast, which means you can charge this in less than two hours from the wall outlet or even a gas generator. And it does have a fast and slow charge speed built into it. It's a switch here on the back that allows you to go between 1800 watts input all the way down to about 400 watts input. The solar cable is an XT90. XT90s are rated to 90 amps, and the charge controller on here will do up to 45 amps. So this is definitely adequate with MC4 connectors on the back here. And then we have just a car charger. This is an XT60 to DC cigarette lighter port plug here. These have become rather obsolete because most people are not gonna drive 30 hours in their vehicle to top these off but it is nice that it is thought of and included in case you do need to charge it from a cigarette lighter port. Comes with this small cable carry case to put everything in. Everything does fit in there except these panels and the manual do not fit in there. Now on the front, I'll show you, this is how everything comes off. It just pops right off and then you have all of your controls right here. The blue button up top is the power on and then in the different sections, you turn on the AC or DC power as needed. One of the things you can do with the app is actually change the colors here, as well as change at what rate it charges from the wall charger. So if you want to use this as a UPS, you definitely can do that where you have a bunch of equipment, say like a sump pump or your computer or anything that you would want to run even when the power is out, maybe a refrigerator. You have it plugged into this and then this plugged into a wall outlet and it will function as a UPS, an uninterrupted power supply. So as soon as grid power goes down, 
this will have already been kept at 100% by being plugged into the wall, and then this is going to continue running that equipment flawlessly. You can set the battery range, so you want it to charge when it hits 20%, or you want it to not charge up to 100%. You can set all of that in the app. You can adjust the screen to where it turns off after a certain amount of time. I like my screen to be on all the time, so I turned it to never turn off. And then you can also set automatic power off time. So if this is unused for 12 hours, it will automatically turn off if it's not needed. You can adjust all of those things here in the app. And then including the lights on here, you push this little light button and you can go to red, go to orange, go to purple, go to blue, go to green. You do all sorts of colors. I think it's really cool that you can do that. It's simply refreshing to have a powerful solar generator power station that is technical, that looks really cool, it feels really cool, and it works great. That's one of the biggest things that I love about it. The biggest downside I've found with the Home 3000 unit, first of all, is on the back here. There are two expansion ports for batteries, which is awesome to have extra batteries to be able to add to it but you can't put two of these together to make 240 volt power, which is split phase. And that would have been epic to have two of these systems right next to each other with the ability to do split phase power and the ability to add up to 3000 watt hours of extra battery capacity for each battery that's added. Because then you could easily get up to 18 kilowatt hours of battery capacity, which is a really large capacity for backup power. It's usually at least a couple of days for most people for just running vital essentials. And then the, my second gripe are the wheels. Now the front wheels, or the caster wheels, they are lockable to where you can push down a little lever and then it keeps it from spinning. But I simply wish that all four wheels were multi-directional wheels. But the ones on the back here are one direction only. So you have to kind of push it around if you want to flip it easily. So on this table where it's not a large surface, it's easy to go back and forth like this. But when I'm trying to park it, I kind of have to do these different moves to get the right angle. Not overall a big deal at all, but it's just something I would have personally liked to be able to spin it in place if I wanted to. It does roll very well on hard surfaces. Even on carpet, it's very easy. There's no telescoping handle or anything like that, but there are recessed handle spots on the top on both sides. Over the last weeks, as I've been testing this, one of the biggest things that I wanted to find out was how efficient the battery and the inverter were together. And what I found doing a 0.2C discharge efficiency test was that I got 86% out of the battery, which is actually very good. But even with some of these units that are behind me, I've gotten as low as 76%, which means you'd only get 76% of the battery as usable power, which is absolutely not good at all. So 86% is definitely good. Having the ability to charge quickly is a really nice thing from the wall outlet, but for me, the most important thing is solar rechargeability. Let's go ahead and jump right into that. So I've got 1200 watts of solar panels connected. That's six 200 watt solar panels. It's a little bit later in the day right now and there's slight, slight overcast. A thousand watts seems to be quite good for the input and that's at 41 volts and 25 amps. That 75 volt mark is really hard to stay below because the solar panels are each putting out about 21 volts before they get connected. That's their VOC, which is their open circuit voltage. And then once you connect it, because it's under load, the volts go down and the amps go up because it's getting used. So if I were to add another two solar panels to each group of three, having two groups of four, then I would have 1600 watts and would still be within the voltage parameter. But I can't do that because the volts will exceed 75 volts before there's a load. That's definitely frustrating. What I'm gonna to try to do now is attach a second group of six panels to make sure that I can maximize the solar input on this. Volts is where charge controllers really get damaged. So I'm gonna go ahead and check my voltage here, getting 59.5 volts. All right, we officially achieved 1500 watts in. However, it takes being at 2400 watts to reach the 1500 watts. This is probably going down simply because there's a cloud coming in the way, but we officially did hit 1500 there for a second. So the good news is we can get 1500 watts input in. Now I wanna connect a 200 watt panel to the wind input and see if we get a little bit more power. This has about 60 watts right here, 50 watts. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it, see how much it drops. Yep, it dropped by about 50 right there when I did it. So you can use 
both inputs to get what would effectively be 1700 watts of max input by using both the wind and the solar input at the same time. That's really cool, you can use both at the same time. So it can be a little tricky to do the solar setup with this because we're working with that 12 to 75 volt range. If they had just bumped it up to 80 volts, then it would have been really easy because then I could have had four 200 watt panels in one group and then four 200 watt panels in another group. And that would have been 1600 watts right there. This has a max input of 1500 watts on the XT90 port, which would have made it really easy to just use those eight panels and get really close to 1500 watt input. It is possible to get the 1500 watt input and that's what really matters is you don't have to over panel a huge amount, but you do have to over panel in order to reach that, at least in the conditions that I was working in. It is really nice to be able to just plug in another 200 watt panel into the wind port and be able to get that extra little boost because that can make the difference of over a thousand watt hours of extra battery capacity. That's about equivalent to running a fridge and freezer nonstop for five hours. It's basically getting that much energy back for free just by having that other port on there. All in all, I think it's a really good system. This is one I'll definitely recommend if you just need 120 volt power and you're looking for a little bit of expandability, keeping in mind that once you've added one extra battery, you're about at the max limitations of its ability to charge from zero to full in a single day while still running your most vital equipment. That's about what you're looking at is around 6,000 watt hours of battery capacity. If you were to add the second expansion battery, then you'd be around 9,000 watt hours of battery capacity, which is the route I would personally go. But just keep in mind that with the 1500 watts of input, minus whatever you're having to run, say a couple of fridges and a freezer, that's not going to be enough solar input to fully recharge the whole system from zero to full in a single day but also the likelihood of getting down to 0% because you have the two expansion batteries is also unlikely, depending on what you have to run. So I wouldn't run space heaters or anything like that off it. I never recommend that because they draw so much energy, but for running fridge, freezer, lights, fans, TV, Wi-Fi, medical devices, toaster, coffee machine, microwave, all sorts of things like that, even induction cooktops or 120 volt electric cooktops, all of that's gonna run very well off of this. It looks good, you can park it against a wall, have everything ready to go. This one, I definitely do recommend and like it. I just wish they had the 240 capability. That for me is like the only thing I wish they had added. There'll be links and discounts of anything I'm able to get for you guys down below. If you want help finding out what system is gonna be best for your situation, just shoot me an email to info at poweredportablesolar.com. This is a great way to have backup power can easily recharge from solar and gas generators and make life so much easier when there is no power. So I'm gonna give it one thumbs up. I would've gotten two thumbs up if it had 240 volt power, but still one full thumbs up, definitely like it. Be prepared guys, thanks for being here. See you on the next video.